Equity research is a great career path that combines deep industry analysis, financial modeling, as well as writing reports. I actually think it's one of the fields in finance that has the most unique skill sets because you're working on such different tasks. Now, what's great about equity research is that you get to become a subject matter expert. How it works is that you're going to cover a specific industry and go very deep on a specific specialization. Ultimately, you might cover a small universe of companies, meaning that you'll understand those companies almost better than anyone else on the planet. Additionally, equity research tends to be very attractive because of its relatively more relaxed hours than say investment banking or private equity, as well as the generally more stable career path. So in this video, we're going to do a complete overview of equity research, including what it actually is, how much you can get paid, as well as some things you should be aware of for recruiting. And I want to let you know that this is essentially an introduction to the equity research and investment research course that me and my friend Abdul just launched. The course content was primarily made by my good friend Abdul Tambal, who spent most of his career at JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, and is frankly one of the smartest people I know in equity research. So what is equity research? Equity research is a sell side function in which you develop investment recommendations as well as company reports in order to get clients to purchase stocks or sell them. You'll be responsible for covering a group of stocks, which entails following up on its quarterly earnings, writing reports, looking at whenever it has a big news event, as well as talking to investors and coordinating these calls with management. I think the easiest way to think about this is like you're a news reporter for a stock. So anytime something important happens to the stock, you write research on it, you cover it, and then you report that to your audience, which is going to be an investor base. Some of the typical responsibilities include the following. Building financial models to forecast out the performance of a stock, developing a comprehensive report on a new company, which is called an initiating coverage report. This is essentially what happens when a company IPOs or a new company comes to market, or potentially your firm is actually just expanding its industry coverage. You're also responsible for writing update reports when a company reports earnings or has a financial event. You'll liaise between corporate executives at public companies and investors, and you'll also assist investment banks with industry-specific knowledge during IPOs. Now, one other very exciting thing about equity research is I think it's the best entry point into finance if you're coming from a completely unrelated background. Now, the reason is because a lot of these fields require very deep industry specialization. If you think about a field like healthcare or oil and gas or real estate, some of the companies are so complex, some of the modeling and some of the concepts are just so esoteric that you're not going to be able to pick this up in the course of ordinary finance. And what a lot of equity research groups do is actually hire from the industry. They'll hire industry professionals and teach them finance as opposed to trying to teach someone in finance about medicine. And as a result, I actually think it's the very easiest way that you can get into finance from a different field. Now, in terms of work-life balance, equity research in general is quite a bit better than investment banking and private equity. However, it is a job that does have high seasonality. Now, the way public companies work is that they report earnings on a quarterly basis. And as a result, that means four times a year, as an equity research person, you're going to be much busier. When a company you're covering publishes its earnings, you have to do a lot of work to update the financial model, create a bunch of new reports, have all these calls, talk to investors, and that really elevates the amount of work you have to do as a totality. I think the median amount of hours you might have over a given year is going to be between 40 and maybe 55 hours. But during earnings season, it can be just as bad as banking or PE, and you might be working between 70 and 80 hours. Additionally, because you're focusing on the public markets, you also have to work market hours, which means you might have to get up earlier than in banking or PE. Now, I think there is an advantage here embedded into the equity research business model, and that's that the periods of seasonality are very predictable. You know exactly when you're going to be busy every single year, and as a result, you can plan around it. Now, in terms of compensation, equity research is still good, but it's not quite as good as banking or PE. In terms of all-in numbers, entry-level analysts might make between $100,000 and $150,000. Associates with maybe three or four years of experience might make between $150,000 and $200,000. And I think the salary divergence is more pronounced at the VP level. VPs might make between $200,000 and $300,000. Director at the next level is probably making between $300,000 and $600,000. And the top MD in your industry group might make between $500,000 and a million dollars. So these numbers are so huge, you can still make a lot of money in equity research. But I do think if you're comparing the mid-level uh, VP and director to private equity and banking, that's really when you'll see a lot of tapering off. I will mention one note here that equity research tends to be much more slanted towards the base. 
That means that 70 to 80% of your entire compensation can be in your base. When you contrast that to other fields, if you're at a hedge fund, it could be 80% of your money is coming from your bonus. In private equity, it could be 50 to 60% coming from carry and bonus. And that just shows you how different it is. Equity research, much more stable. You kind of know what you're getting, but there is a little bit less of that upside. I think part of the reason why this is, is the business model. Investment banking tends to be a percentage of the transaction value. So if you work on bigger deals, there's more profits that go into the group. And on the buy side, if you have good investments or if you manage more money, then you'll also get paid more. But in equity research, you're compensated for the research itself. People are paying you for access to company management as well as the quality of the reports you're writing. So there's not really this idea of commission or the ability to earn investment profits. So now let's talk about why you might want to do equity research and we'll go over some of the big pros and cons about the career field. I think the coolest thing to me is that you get to become an industry expert in a single field. Part of your job is writing these deep research reports on industries covering new companies. And I think if you like writing and if you like exercising that part of your brain, there's not really going to be a better fit. What's also interesting is that you get to deal with both sides of the investment narrative. You can talk to investors who might be skeptical about a company. You get to talk to the company very closely and hear why they're optimistic about the future. And I think that also puts you in a unique position. And as a result, I do think the exit ops are pretty good. Lots of people go to hedge funds or go to business school or move to corporate. And I think it just is one of those roles that keeps your optionality. Now, in terms of cons, I think the big thing for me is that the hours are highly variable. It's almost like you're working two different jobs. Most of the time you're working a pretty ordinary schedule. You know, most people can tolerate 40 to 55 hours, but during those peak seasons, it can be pretty bad. Things are on a very tight deadline and there is that level of stress and importance to your work. Relatedly, you are working on a news driven work schedule. So if there is a random news event in the middle of the week or early in the morning, it's your job to be responsive to it. Now, thirdly, the teams in equity research tend to be fairly small. So as a mid-level person, you might still be stuck doing the formatting or doing very basic modeling or having to work with editors. That's something that would normally be kind of distributed out to analysts at other firms. But in equity research, because the teams are smaller, that generally means a flatter organization, which can be good, but at the same time, it generally also means that you'll be stuck doing junior tasks for a longer period of time. So finally, we want to talk about recruiting for equity research, and we're going to do a much deeper dive into this in the course, but I want to just leave you with a couple of key points. The first thing, and you should recognize a pattern at this point, but specialization is very important when recruiting for equity research. If you're thinking about going to finance coming from a different industry, equity research is probably the easiest way for you to do so. Now, it's not going to be automatic. You're still going to have to do a lot of other prep. And I do think the CFA is something that is valuable in equity research, but it can be a lot more streamlined and more logical than going straight into something like banking or straight onto the buy side. Secondly, off-cycle recruiting is definitely the norm in equity research. There's no concept of on-cycle recruiting. It's really need-based or ad hoc based when a spot opens up or someone leaves. And because there's relatively less attrition in the field, that means that spots can be rarer. Now, lastly, in terms of prep, the most important thing you can do is start studying companies. The crux of the interview is essentially coming up with thoughtful and detailed stock pitches that you can present during the interview. You should spend a lot of time studying the specific industry that you're recruiting for, and you wanna pick a couple of companies in that space that you can really talk to. I think you should be at the point where you can develop your own report on a company and actually do the financial modeling as well as company analysis that they'll be expecting. So if you'd like to learn more about equity research, you can check out the course on our website, Abdul has prepared a fantastic curriculum that's going to walk you through the recruiting steps, as well as the key interview questions and how to pick and research a stock. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.